Hello, YouTube. Do you know what's the least favorite thing that horse people like to hear when they go to the barn with somebody else? When that person looks at a horse and goes, Wilbur! No, really, like, that's like the last thing that we ever think about when we see a horse. So please, if you're with a uh, horse-crazy friend, please do not quote uh, Mr. Ed ever. It's so old, just, just let it die. So, here we go with a very pretty warm blood horse in Copic Markers. Starting with the ears, I took kind of a different approach because the ears have a lot of things going on with them. I decided to work in one area and put on all the different layers at the same time instead of working over a larger area like I did here with the face. Um, Concentrating your efforts in a small area can really help with blending because the ink will stay wetter longer. But uh, for some reason I just kind of let it go and then I just went and I did the rest of the head working in bro a broader area and put going on layer by layer. That does mean that your colors will dry in between. It won't be as easy to blend. You'll need to re-wet the area. But it is one way of working and kind of blocking out your color sections uh, all at once. Horses are very tricky to, to color because they have very muscular bodies with very, very fine hair that lays very close to the skin, making them so shiny. It also means that light really bends and plays all over their bodies. And so they're very challenging subjects. And uh, this is going to be a bay-colored horse, and I think the bays are probably the most challenging because they have so many different shades of brown, and there's like blue in there, and they're, they're crazy. They're uh, very tricky. So um, you may notice in comparing to my previous videos of human beings, my horses look a hell of a lot better than my human people. That's because I've been drawing horses for a very, very long time. And I've also, I think most importantly, I've been working with them um, on a professional level for eight years as a horseback riding instructor. Um, but many more years before that, I started riding when I was about eight or nine years old. Um, I for those first couple years, my parents could really only afford to send me to a horse camp uh, once a year in uh, Golden Gate Park. Uh, we really never had a lot of money. I still don't have a lot of money. So uh, to love horses is both a blessing and a curse when you are a poor girl. <laughs> uh, but I worked very, very hard and I managed to become a riding instructor and uh, I've always gotten a lot of very positive feedback uh, from my boss and from my clients and so I'd like to say I was good instructor but what's nice when you spend so much time around horses is, and you spend so much hands-on time literally you really um, get to be somewhat skilled at, at drawing them because you understand their forms you know how their muscles work how their muscles lay on their skull and their bodies and so if ever you want to get better at drawing something, um, try to, to get your hands on it, literally. Uh, manipulate it, work with it, understand how it works anatomy-wise, um, and that will really help you with, with, your, with your subject. This piece, it's a, this is a long video, it's almost 17 minutes, um, because it does take a very long time with horses, especially bay-colored horses. It's a lot of layers, layers upon layers. And so as you're beginning to put on your, your Copic marker and you notice that it's streaky, uh, don't worry about it because you're going to be putting many layers on top of it and those streaks will go away. Um, so that's why when I put the first layers of color on, they look pretty rough um, and they get, they get better. Um, as you continue to layer. It's also the challenge is, is how, how much to do. Even though there are some parts of the horse's head that are pretty complex, there are also some parts that are rather flat. They're just flat planes, like on the cheek. And you, you have to, as an artist, decide how defined you want to make that. 
um, you'll see later I'll go over the parts of the neck and the cheek to actually make it look a little bit flatter because for a while it was looking almost too muscular. There were too many areas of stark definition and I needed to soften that up. It's always good to to step back away from your artwork and not look at it for a while, a couple hours, a day, a week, and then come back to it and look at it with fresh eyes to see what what could be improved. Here I'm putting in his gray little nose. I think I think the muzzle and the nose probably my favorite parts to illustrate because they're so soft even though most horses uh, really don't like being pet on the nose because it is very sensitive. It's their sense organ and how they make sense of, uh, of touch of things around them and so sometimes when you try to pet them there it's a little bit too much and most of them uh, will politely pull their heads away trying to say no don't pet me. Mm, too much. Pet me somewhere else. And so in the last video, I asked um, kind of what was your click in high school. And so for this video, I would love to hear your experiences uh, with equines, with horses. Um, have you ever ridden one seriously? Like like not at a at a fair, but actually in a lesson when you where where you learned actual technique. And uh, if you would like to do that or um, anything else about your life with horses. Uh, maybe your favorite horse movie. Um, I think my favorite horse movie is that absolutely stunning Black Beauty that they made in the 90s. Um, oh my gosh, the, those movies that they made, Black Beauty, Secret Garden, Little Princess, I'm sure I'm missing some more. Oh, Secret Garden is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. They made these charming, charming films in that period in the 90s and they're so, they were so beautiful uh, just charming and lovely and oh I don't think they will ever make those movies ever again um, they're just too lovely they're too quaint they're just too perfect they're excellent movies for children you know there really isn't violence of course there's there's conflict and but it's not it's not over the top nothing is exploding they're not rude they're really wonderful, and I, I do hope the, those types of movies will be made again. But the but, but that Black Beauty with David Thewis um, is probably my favorite horse movie. With Hidalgo uh, coming next after that, uh, so let me know what your horse experiences and what your horse favorite horse movie is, or maybe you really like ponies or My Little Ponies. Um, or maybe you really like donkeys, maybe that's your equine, but just let me know. Uh, I'm very curious. And if, you know, if you've always wanted to learn how to ride a horse, I really suggest it. It's really one of the most um, intriguing hobbies you could take up. You learn so much about yourself and so much about communication. Um, it's it's really incredible, and if you think that riding a horse is easy, um, you do not know how to ride a horse. Let's just leave it at that. It is also one of the most challenging activities you could ever undertake. Uh, sometimes horse people joke there's a reason why the oldest athletes in the Olympics are the equestrian athletes, because it takes that long to really know what you're doing, and even then, Every horse person, even at the very, very top, will tell you, I still don't know everything. I'm still learning every day. Very fun. I highly suggest you go out and try it if you've never done it before. Um, the neck and the body. Ooh, skipped forward there. I cut a few things out to make the video a little bit uh, shorter. But you can see in the, in the neck, I kind of overdefined it. It looks a little bit like a... Um, <laughs> like a bodybuilder horse, <laughs> those steroids, those quarter horses on steroids. And here I'm doing the mane. Uh, I'm going. It's supposed to be black mane, but I'm going in with gray to to lay it down first, and then I'll go in with a little bit of the dark brown, but no actual black. Uh, black is a dangerous color. Uh, be very careful. It can really overwhelm a drawing. And so, if you want to make something black, 
you really have to build up shades and shades of shades and gray, of, of gray um, and really use the black only sparingly and I actually encourage using the darker shades of gray for your black instead of uh, actual black. If you're wondering, his mane is shaved right behind the ears. That's called a bridle path, and that makes it so that when he has his bridle on, the bridle goes on top there. It's less itchy and sweaty, a little bit more comfortable for the horse. His hair doesn't get pooled. And so that's why it's a little shaved there. And it's those fun details that um, really make can make a drawing. And, and that really is going to come from your level of research into your subject. And some tulips. Why not? I thought tulips were pretty and uh, relatively simple. <laughs> and you know, I think there isn't too much time left. I think I will go ahead and put in a little bit of music to go ahead and finish. And thank you so much for watching. And uh, remember, uh, fill out some comments in the comment section. I love hearing back from you guys. Alright, thank you. Have a wonderful day.